Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 47, Vacation Recap. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my mature and responsible co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi. How are you doing today, sweetheart? Pretty good. So we are back from a well-deserved vacation. Mm -hmm. Uh, We went south for the holidays to uh, Disney World. Um, don't hyperventilate, okay? I'm not trying to hyperventilate. I'm doing what you told me to. I I know. Okay, you should be fine. Okay. So, we did take a vacation, um, which was, for me, kind of strange being in Disney for the holidays, despite all the decorations and, uh, Christmas carols they jammed down your throat. It just did not somehow feel like Christmas down there for some reason. So, it was very strange. Mm Mm-hmm. But anyway, we're going to do a recap of what we did, um, even uh, to go into the drive down and kind of uh, (laughs) explain to folks how you can keep a 13-year-old active on uh, a 16-hour drive. Yeah, why not? (laughs) Um, And uh, talk about the resorts. We'll talk about... Uh, some of the destinations, we didn't do a lot down there. Uh, we only actually had one day in the parks, but there's a lot more in the parks at Disney, and a lot more than just the parks at Disney. Mm-hmm. Um, we did some cool new things down there for the first time. Yep. Which for us is, is significant because you've been down how many times now? Um, 20. You've been to Disney World 20 times now. Um, so anytime we can go down after that many times and you can still do something new, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And then we'll finish up with your closing remarks and shout outs. Alrighty. So ready to get started? Why not? All right, let's do it. So we drove down, we don't fly, um, typically, um, for a number of reasons. One I just simply dislike the whole airport experience, but we also tend to buy a lot of things, which are very tough to get home on a plane when we're down there. Mm -hmm. So from where we live, uh, we're based in Southern New Jersey. Uh, it is about 16, no, about a thousand miles, a little over a thousand, like 1100 miles. Okay. So we do an overnight on the way down, right? Mm -hmm. So the first leg of ours was a little over 700 miles, which took us, which typically takes about 11 and a half hours. We ran into some traffic though. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. I mean, it's rough when you hit traffic going down. Um, Usually we're used to hitting it in the DC area when we get down there because we usually hit that around the rush hour. Yeah. So we did an overnight down to Savannah, Georgia. Mm Mm-hmm. And then we got up bright and early the next day and got back on the road for an additional 300 some miles and over five, six hours of driving should only take about four and a half. But again, we hit traffic down in, in Northern Florida there. (coughs) So that was, that was kind of rough. And the second day we wound up on Disney property, uh, at, uh, the first of many resorts we stayed at yeah. this week. Um, and we took breaks every two, two, two to three hours or so. Mm-hmm. You know, bathroom breaks, food, whatever, get gas, just to get out of the car and stretch our legs. Yeah. So what I'd like to talk to you about is, one, how do you stay active on what amounts to almost a 15-hour road trip? Um, 
and then we'll talk about you know how what you thought of the drive so first question to you is <clears throat> what were some of the activities some of the family activities that we did well, I think the first one was we did Disney trivia because we have the Disney Play app. And we, um, one we repeatedly tried to do was the Galaxy's Edge one and for Hollywood Studios, which um, in the very beginning we kind of failed at. We were terrible at. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the fantasy, like, when we went to Toy Story and Fantasyland, like, those were the ones we pretty much aced. Right. Because we knew the most about. Because you've been to it 20 times. Yeah. <laughs> at least, yeah. Yeah. So we did Disney trivia, and then there was another app that you were using on your iPad. What was that? That was Gosh to Life. And I had actually made up that game asking you guys what kind of creature I should make, what color their eyes were, what gender, you know, all that cool stuff. So that was cool. We wound up making, oh, I don't know, a dozen maybe, maybe more different characters yeah um with that app itself yeah and, and that did a good job keeping us occupied for a good portion of the time mm -hmm. um so that was very creative of you to come up with that one yep and then there was another thing that we do which i think just about everyone does on a road trip we did our family sing-alongs yep what are some of the songs that we sing in our family sing-alongs well, we have a Celtic Thunder playlist, and whenever there was a song I um, enjoy, I would just sing along with you because, you know, what else was I going to do? <laughs> well, yes, and you, we know you do love your Irish drinking songs. Hey. Um, so aside from the family activities, what did you do to keep yourself occupied? Well, for most of the time, I just repeatedly listened to songs that I liked. I don't know, I just listen to the songs over and over again just because I like them and they sound cool and it's always cool to have an imagination of like a music video where me and some of my um, characters can like just sing along with the songs because they're kind of relatable. Okay. What about uh, videos and, and stuff? Oh, yeah, I watched a lot of videos. So you were, what were you watching, like YouTube stuff? Pretty much. Um, I think I would occasionally go to my Talking Tom apps and just play those games. And um, I would just periodically check on them and stuff like that. Then I'd go back to YouTube and then I'd um, periodically switch between my iPad and my phone and I would always, like, make sure to tr have a good amount charging them, and I was actually pretty good at charging all of them. Good. And that that's definitely key, is making sure that all your technology has power, right? Yep. So you were also FaceTiming, weren't you? Yeah, I, w I would talk to my friends occasionally. I would either text them. I would periodically have FaceTimes with my friend Lily. Um, but most of the time, I would just text with my other friends. Okay, cool. So... It was sounded like a you know pretty rounded set of activities that we did to keep things going. I'm sure there was some napping that happened at some point in time. I know I had napped. Not with me though. I did not nap a single time. You didn't time. nap at all. Nope. Wow. I tried when we were about to hit Savannah, but I didn't. I failed. Wow. Okay. So overall, what were your impressions of the drive? 15 hours on the road. I mean, it was good. I could finally listen to a lot of music for once because I don't, because most of the time when we're driving, I don't get a lot of time to listen to music. And it was good to like have the time and the fact that I even got tired at one point to listening to music, which never normally happens. And I want more time to listen to music. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and it's all, and for some reason, I just like the fact of how I sometimes just get bored on the road because it's um a long drive but i do appreciate the stops and how we get snacks and stuff you know it's funny to think that um when i was a kid <clears throat> the road trips that we would take would be down the shore which for us typically lasted an hour maybe an hour and a half was like the longest road trip we would take and i remember as a kid that was just the most agonizing thing i would remember coming back because we would vacation down in wildwood and i would remember coming back from a, a week down in wildwood trying to come up the atlantic city expressway and it just seemed like an eternity and to think now 
we're literally driving over a thousand miles, you know, if, and we've driven the whole thing in one shot too. We don't yeah. always overnight. Yeah. I remember one time we drove the whole thing and like we got home at 530. We got home at 435 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a crazy drive to do that. that but that was like the only time I think I ever slept during the road trip. I, I just think it's funny. Like as a kid, for me, an hour in the car was exceedingly long where you're spending, I think we were in the car 13 hours, the first leg down, um, which is, now mind you, I didn't have all the te technology in the yeah. car that you have either. So, but all in all, not a bad ride. I mean. Yeah, I mean. Which, which would you rather do? Would you rather do the 15 hour road trip down or would you rather take a plane and be down there in two and a half hours? The 15 hour one because. One, you can, like, stop whenever you really want to. And two, I have a deep-seated fear of flying because you never know what could happen, especially after I learned about, nine, well, a certain plane incident. Right. Okay, well, thanks for dragging that one into the gutter for us. Uh, so we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the various resorts that we stayed at. Yay. So when we booked the trip this time around, we were kind of late in booking it. And the time of year that we booked it makes it kind of difficult to get the room, you know, because we're going down there at literally the busiest time of the year around the holidays. So what happened with us is normally we would, we would pick one resort. We'd spend the whole time there and just enjoy the parks. We knew we weren't going to be able to do that this time. Um, so for the time that we wanted to go down, we had to basically resort hop and we stayed at four different resorts. These are DVC Disney vacation club resorts during the duration of our stay. And we originally weren't even going to go to the parks until I saw the special for galaxy's edge. And then I said, well, I, I can't go to Disney world and not go to star Wars land cause they'll laugh me out of the building when I get home and go to work. <laughs> so we did one day in the park down there. So the first place that we stayed at was um, Saratoga Springs, which we've stayed at before. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think of Saratoga Springs this time? We only stayed there one night this time. Honestly, I kind of wish we could stay longer. Yeah, it is a nice resort. It's actually one of our home resorts for DVC. Plus, there was actually, like, an art thing that was going on, and it was going on, and something art artsy was going on on Thursday, and we weren't there, th and we weren't going to be there for Thursday, so I was kind of upset about that, and I just saw, like, there were a bunch of paintings, and when we went to the one DVC room, I think, or the room where you can do a, some arts and crafts, I just saw people painting on canvases, and I just thought it was cool, plus they have an arcade. Right. Well, and the one art thing that they were doing was a Baby Yoda portrait. <laughs> yeah, Mommy, so, like, lost her mind when she saw it. <laughs> yeah, so that would have been cool. Uh, but you guys did wind up doing one little project there. Tell us about that. Oh, yeah. So when we were at the one room, they were making cookies at a certain time. So me and Mommy just um, stayed, played a game there. And when it was time, we had gotten – we got the cookies and – Apparently, they only had three colors, and they were Christmas colors, and they were green, um, red, and white, and I decided I would make Baby Yoda. So when we got home, I made a Baby Yoda cookie, and Mommy took a picture of it. That was pretty cool. Unfortunately, we don't have the picture to show um, right now, but... Unfortunately. Um, with any luck, we'll, uh, we'll be able to show that off once we get all the pictures off of Mommy's phone. Yeah. So after Saratoga Springs, we went to Old Key West which we've stayed at before and mm -hmm. we like there. Uh, and we were there for two, two nights. nights. So two nights there. And what did you guys do there? Well, on Christmas day, since we stayed there, we base, I basically went swimming for the first time on Christmas on day. Christmas day. Like now I can actually just say, I swear about Christmas day. Like I swear if I go to school and we're like, and like, my one journal for ELA says, what did you do over Christmas break? Over Christmas break, or what did you do for Christmas Day? I'm just going to be like, 
I swear I'm in a pool on Christmas Day. <laughs> I just want to put that just to say that I finally did that. Being in New Jersey, we don't get to do that very often. Yeah. Luckily, we didn't miss a white Christmas. Because if I did, I was just going to... Mm. No, but we did have a wet Christmas down there. It, <laughs> it rained most of the time. Yeah, but overall, I did like being in Oak, Old Key West. Eh. Um, what else did we do in Old Key West? Anything? Um... Um, hmm, gotta think. Yeah, I don't think we had anything else to do. Yeah, we basically just stayed in our room most of the time. Yeah. Well, and we were at Old Key West when we went to... Star Wars Celebration? We didn't go to Celebration. Not this time around. I'm saying when we yeah. went to the park, we were at, at uh, Old Key West that day, too. Yeah. So from Old Key West, we did two days there. From there, we then went about an hour and a half east and south to Disney's Vero Beach Resort. And we did three days there? Three nights. Three nights. So tell us about the stay there. What did you like about it? Um, what did we do? What was fun? Well, at Vero Beach, that was the longest time we stayed in any resort, so we got the most time there. I have to say the room was very nice. Um, it was actually, um, it had two beds, which was nice because, um, for the first two resorts, I had to sleep on the couch because there was only one bed and I didn't want to take up anyone's space. So, um, but for both Old Key, West, Old Key West and Vero Beach, I actually got to sleep in a bed, so that right. was nice. Um, the balcony was definitely nice. The only problem was the fact that they didn't have a light because I was going to work late at night on my one project. And you did do a lot of your, your schoolwork on the balcony, too, yeah, which was and nice. Yeah, I enjoyed, I actually kind of enjoyed that. Um, yeah. We also, um... We, there was actually a beach right by it, and it was nice because that was, like, the first ever beach experience I'll ever get to, I've ever got to experience. I mean, we've been to the boardwalk and the shore before, but never really did I ever go to the beach in my bathing suit, and I only did that once there. Well, and the fact that you could literally walk from the pool of the, of the resort uh, to the beach was kind of a, a help with that. Yeah, we also did a campfire there, which was nice and yeah, a funny coincidence. Nice. Okay, yeah, we'll talk about the coincidence in a minute. So, um, we, me and Mommy also, when we were at the pool, because we went from the beach to the pool, because we were technically all in our... Um, Swimsuits? Yeah, so, um, and you had told me if I wanted to make nachos when we had got back to the resort because we had chips and cheese in a microwave... I had to either go down the water slide or have to go to the DJ booth and right. request Hotel California. <laughs> and you know how long I spent like pondering it. Like, do I want to face my fear of heights or do I want to face my fear of socializing? Well, and you did a fantastic job, you know, overcoming the social anxiety. Yeah. I mean, I saw that out, that was be would be easier because I just saw how simple it was. So that's why I kind of chose it. Well, and let's face it, the slide was like three stories tall. So, yeah. So, and you said before, like you said, like the entire trip, because we were on the third floor of the resort, you're like, we can survive. You could survive a th um, three story fall. The, yes. I mean, you might break your bones, but you know, <laughs> the average human being can survive a, a three story fall, not including broken bones. Well, you'll probably get injured. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we also um, would all, would normally eat at the market place, and the food there is great. I recommend the burgers because they were really good, okay. and the fries are good as well. Okay. Um, what else did we do there? Um, oh yeah, we you all did, there you was played, also you guys played mini golf, right? Yeah, I said that before. Well, oh, I didn't hear you say that. I'm sorry. Oh wait, no, I didn't. I didn't say that. So after um, I had gotten back from the DJ booth a while, a few minutes later, um, mommy had. T had after, well, sorry, so, um, we, had, me and mommy, me and mommy decided to do mini golf, so we both went up to the stand, and, um, we had played mini golf, and she rightfully won. I'm not particularly right. the best at aiming at mini golf. I'm getting better, but still not great. Okay, so you guys played mini golf. That and was at, that was another thing at the resort. Yeah, and immediately when you heard Hotel California, you were just like, hey, yay! 
yay, right. or something right. like that. Um, so we also wound up going out to eat at a few places. There was a couple of interesting restaurants that we ate at. Mm-hmm. Uh, we ate at a one place out by the airport there, which was kind of aviation themed. Yeah. <laughs> with some creepy life-size mannequins yeah, strategically placed around. I didn't like that. And then we ate, uh, and I don't, I'll have to look up uh, the name of the restaurant. Yeah, I don't remember the name, but I knew it was car themed and like. It was, it was car themed and. The menus had license, pl- we made of license plates. Yeah, it was, it was very cool. It was very cool. Yeah. Um, so I, we had a good time there and uh, we, we finished up there. We headed off to Hilton Head, uh, South Carolina, which was on the way back. Uh, that was our overnight stay instead of Savannah. Yeah. Uh, we just did one night there. We didn't really get a chance to take advantage of the uh, amenities that the resort had. We did go yeah. out to eat one night there. Uh, but what did you think of the room there and, and the view from the balcony? Honestly, the room was pretty big. And it was like almost three rooms because the kitchen was like separate from the bedroom and the bathroom was quite big. Um, the view th- from the balcony, though, was sort of swampy, not the best view. Right. T- even the parking lot from Vero that we saw from the balcony was better, I yeah. have to be honest. Yeah, it, was. it was more Disney. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Um, and but, you know, from- we also had the infamous Disney water incident. Yeah, yeah, Disney's famous for having really bad water. Yeah. So, that's because they're environmentally friendly. Yeah. But I think all in all, the trip itself went well. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least our stays at the resorts were were acceptable. Mm-hmm. Um, one honorary mention for another resort that we had visited but didn't stay at. We had dinner reservations at the Grand Floridian. Mm-hmm. And we went out there. And we got to see how they did the Christmas decorations. Uh, and it was really nice. I mean, they do mm-hmm. a great spread for Christmas. Uh, they have a, a tree there that's probably three stories tall. Mm-hmm. But the real highlight was what? The gingerbread house. Yeah, they've got a giant life-size gingerbread house that they sell gingerbread from. Yeah, I have to be honest. That's really cool. Mommy even went up and bought it. Yeah, she bought uh, one of the shingles that they make the uh, walls from. Yeah. So that was that was kind of neat. We got tons of pictures from that. Uh, and we might put a little collage together to... Uh, to tack on the tail end of this podcast mm-hmm. once we post it or maybe next week's. Yeah. Um, but the resorts turned out to be pretty good for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get back. We'll uh, take a quick break and come back and talk about our Disney World destinations. We. So we officially only had one night or one day in the parks, I should mm-hmm. say. Um, but that isn't the only Disney destination that we are talking about here. The first one that we, we always go to is it's today. It's called Disney Springs. It used to be called downtown Disney. Yeah. We're still having troubles getting used to saying it. (laughs) Right. Right. So we're, we're still adjusting to that. Um, so one of the really neat things that we, we got to see at Disney Springs was, their Christmas tree display. So the Imagineers down there um, decorate a whole bunch of different Christmas trees with different themes. Mm -hmm. So tell us some of the themes that we got to see. Well, we saw a bunch of themes from the movies like Peter Pan, um, Pinocchio, and like all the Disney princess, most of the Disney princess movies. Right. And Mommy's overall favorite, the Haunted Mansion one. Absolutely. Which honestly was kind of creepy, but also cool at the exact same time. It was. Because it, it, it had a huge uh, a figure of the bride, bride emerging from the tree, which, which ha- was a really cool effect. It was also sort of creepy. It was definitely creepy. So they had, I don't know, how many trees did they have there? Had to have been 20 trees at least, all decorated unique. Yeah, I don't remember how many there were. They had a Star Wars tree. Yep. Which is important. Yeah. Uh, so this was actually the day after Christmas. Um, they have an area set up there where, I guess, obviously before Christmas, you can go and see Santa uh, there. He wasn't there. Yeah. He was on vacation by that point. Yep. Um, but the Christmas trees were cool. Um, then we did 
uh, one of the cool things we we did was we went to the Left Handers store. Yep. Uh, so tell us about the Left Hander store. So the Left Hander store was just like a small little stand, and they had a bunch of stuff for Left Handers. And coincidentally, I'm a Left Hander, and they had like notebooks that have instead of the traditional spine to the left, it has it to the right because occasionally when you're writing left-handed, your hand will get probably sort of hurt from the um spring so they put right. it on the other side they also coincidentally had pencils for left-handers which i didn't even think existed also they had scissors i'm not surprised that they had left-handed scissors and they also had t-shirts so let's see if we can get a shot of the t-shirt here give us a give us a shot of the logo okay so it's so it's a you know you got it it's a lefty thing you, you wouldn't, wouldn't understand. understand yeah i like this shirt so much and i felt it was like my personality so i decided why not go ahead and get it because i wanted to get something to prove that i went there yeah so i decided to get a t-shirt and this one just lit up for me so i think it's great i think i think the fact that they you know have stuff out there that that not only novelty stuff like the t-shirts but practical things to help overcome some of the issues that left-handers tend to face on a day-to-day -day basis is kind of neat. Yeah, we face a lot of issues. Unfortunately, they didn't have those gloves that be since you basically go over your, um, your, um, your, the your words writing you, and stuff. you're writing you basically make, you always get graphite on the side of your hand. That's been a problem for me, and I only started to really notice it when, like, I would write on the chart chalkboard and before i actually learned how to write without my hand going on it like the chalk would be erased and i'd have to fix it yeah all that kind of stuff so yeah that was kind of cool and then the other thing that we did was they have a lego store there and we always love going into the lego stores and for the longest time they had the ability to build a lego mm -hmm. um and they do this at the lego stores in the mall too where you have all the pieces on this little stand and you can put all the pieces together and make your own Lego. Yeah. This time they had something different where you can actually have a Lego custom printed for you. Well, only the torso. But only yeah. the torso. And we did that and we created your own custom Lego. Let's take a look at that. Alrighty. Now, I don't know how well this will appear on here. So hold it towards the camera. I just need to get that. There you go. So the block it's standing on, or was standing on before you dropped it, <laughs> has your name printed on it. Yep. And you designed the shirt, the torso. Uh-huh. So oh. tell us about the torso. Okay, I'm going to have to just take... That's fine. So tell us about how you designed it. Okay, so I went with a hoodie because I was actually going to make my character. Uh-huh. So, on the front, I decided to make the hoodie blue because I didn't like the traditional white and green they had. And let me just say, it was really hard writing it. Like, Because you had to write it on it. the screen by hand, right? Yeah, the only it. real problem with it is that the, the shirt just covers some of it, but overall it's pretty good. I also decided to put... They also had, like, little pictures you could add to them. And I decided to add an Orlando one to the front just to say that... This was from so it's, Orlando. So Florida. basically, you, your Lego's wearing an Orlando hoodie that yeah. you got down there. And I was able to also customize the back that says, I heart o Orlando. And it actually has Legos made out of the heart made out of Legos, which is pretty cool. Nice. And I decided to make myself out of it. So I decided to make my traditional outfit. A hoodie, jeans, my face, which was kind of hard to find. Luckily, Mommy was able to find a semi-realistic hairstyle. I mean, okay. I wanted to go blonde because I'm traditionally a blonde, even though I'm basic. I have pink hair. Right. Um, and she was only real. We weren't able to find a braid, but we found this one, which has a braid in the back. So good enough, even That's though I would never. Enough. Even though I would never have this hairstyle. And right. since I play the trumpet in school, I also got a little trumpet. Because nice. you could have one accessory for the hand. Nice. And that was, you know, fairly inexpensive to do. It was, I think, 12 bucks and yeah. change to do it. So so that was another thing we did at Disney Springs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we went to... Uh, the one day we did in the parks was Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. So before we get into all the crazy stuff we want to talk about, 
just give us your impression of Hollywood Studios and what your favorite ride that wasn't in Galaxy's Edge was. Um, overall, Hollywood Studios is a pretty nice park. I wouldn't say it's my um, fit. I don't know if it's quite my favorite park. I don't even know if I have a favorite park, but it's definitely an enjoyable experience. Um, it's basically themed. It you I remember it used to be called MGM Studios because right. it was basically going to be a park where you where Imagineers could or well could make things like. Well, it was a, it was an active studio. Yeah, at the it was time. An, yeah, and they would produce TV shows and stuff there. Yeah, and it's definitely become more. Um, theme parky. Theme parky, yeah. yeah. And I honestly like that. And they actually had a giant Christmas tree, and I think, um, and also giant ornaments that looked like floatables because you could just see them floating on the water. Yeah, which was cool. Yeah. Um, we never really, we only really did a few rides other than the ride in Galaxy's Edge. Um, we did Star Tours and. Um, me and you went on, um, Toy Story Mania, right. which was, well, you, me, and Mommy all went, but you, only we you and me. kind of got split up. Yeah. yeah. Um, and me and Mommy went on, I don't remember what the ride was, but it was the one, um, space one where you ride in an oh, alien. Oh, the, the alien spinning ride thingy in <laughs> Toy Story Land. Yeah, you don't even know what it's called. I either. don't know the name either. No. Uh, if anyone knows, please tell us. We don't really remember. Yeah, I'm bad with names. Me too. All right, so you managed to get on three rides. Of those three, what was your favorite? Um, I think just riding towards, well, hmm. Can I just say what I liked about each ride? Absolutely. Okay, so the alien swirling saucer was fun, although the fact that whenever it turned this way, Mommy would always run into me, and I'm just like, ugh. Yeah, physics. Honestly, um, I think me running into her is better than her running into me, because I'm kind of smaller than her. Yeah. Um, For Toy Story Mania, you and me were versing, and that was fun. Um, You clearly won. I'm not very good at <laughs> versing my parents, <laughs> just saying. I mean, unless we're playing, like, a Minecraft battle, that's the only thing I think I'll be able to win. Okay. Um, and for, um, oh, my God, Star, Star Tours, Tours. Um, we ended up having to get held back a little because one of the seats in the ride we were going in was broken. So no, I didn't break it, to... just for the record. It was broken before I even got on the ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it was kind of cool because they had based it off the new movie. And I'm pretty sure very rare people had seen the movie besides us. Because, yeah. you know, true Star Wars fans. So we knew, ex I kind of knew exactly what was everywhere. But, like, I felt bad for the people who was like, what are these places? Yeah, it was it was neat because they had updated. The, and they periodically they update the ride. And the ride is three different scenes. And they're randomly selected. And this time that we went through, all three scenes were related to the new movies. Yeah. Um, and literally right out of the movie, I mean, you flew into the Death Star that was out in the ocean, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so Although you saw like neat. a bunch of the eye monsters. Correct. Like, um, I haven't seen so many, and that scene just terrified me. Right, right. So, so, okay, so those rides were cool. So the big deal that we had was we got to go to Galaxy's Edge for the first time down there, which is what we affectionately refer to as Star Wars Land. Yeah. So. Or Black Spire Outpost, if you're that kind or of Or that, too, if you want to get really official. <laughs> yeah. So what was your initial thoughts on Galaxy's Edge? Well... Um, before I even went in there, I'm... No, no, like when you got in there. Um, I definitely thought it was cool. I mean, the first sight was just a bunch of trees for me. But once I finally got to see the whole thing, I realized that it was much bigger and you could barely see any of the other stuff. Like, you turn the corner, oh my god, there's a giant ship. You turn the other corner, oh look, there's a marketplace. You turn the other corner, oh look, the Millennium Falcon, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty neat. It was pretty yeah. neat. What was your favorite part of Galaxy's Edge? Um, hmm. I really don't know. I like the whole experience. You could find, you actually felt like you had left Hollywood Studios. Like, you had left Disney in general. You were just in 
a star the Star Wars world um that is Black Spire Outpost. Yeah. And it like, was immersive, yeah. And can and the first time I actually went out of it because we like went straight there and when we came out I'm just like can I go back in? <laughs> I just felt like I just wanted to go back in because I didn't want to see the reality. <laughs> I didn't want to go back to Hollywood Hollywood Studios yet. So there was a couple of things that we did do there. Let's let's talk about the food first. So the food is themed to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. So we had Bantha and something else, um, and it was served. You know, instead of on the paper plates that you typically get from the quick serve, it was served on um, metal plates with metal forks and stuff. Yeah, it looked like they were really made out of the star like it looked like the plates from Star Wars. Right. And with the food, what did first of all, what did the food look like? Okay, so I'd gotten a cinnamon roll um and they had had like I don't know if it was chocolate or anything, but they were like it looked like the toppings on it looked as though they were part of Star Wars and they like tasted completely different than how they looked like right. and they tasted really good I have to be honest they looked kind of gross but they tasted amazing and that was you know I could say the same thing about the dish that I got I got you know bantha blah 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 and it was sausage and potatoes which you know seems pretty simple but the way it's prepared it looks like an alien dish and like your eggs, they were shaped into a bowl. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was very well done, um, and the decor that they had there, like you were eating in a hangar, you know, there was a ship on top, and the doors slid open, and there I was I know, I love that. Like alien slime on the doors and stuff, and then the other quick serve, they had a rotisserie spit going with a droid oh, moving yeah. it, and it was being cooked and i say cooked in air quotes by the engine from a pod racer mm-hmm. and just that effect itself with the the steam blowing down and everything yeah. it was incredible the, the, and the effect f- and like that's one of the coolest quick serves i think i've ever seen like you can just sit there and that's basically sort of entertainment i agree a hundred percent so um there were two other I'm going to say exclusive things that you could do because you needed reservations to do them. Uh, one was building a custom lightsaber at Savi's workshop. Tell us about that experience. Okay, so you know how sometimes in when you're either in um, Dis, um, Disney Springs or even in Star Tours, they have the build-your-own lightsaber. The toy ones, right? Yeah, I've yeah. done that and... Honestly, the experience isn't the best, but the fact that this, it's just a whole new experience. Like, you can choose what type of lightsaber you want. There was justice and peace, I think, um, power and control. Right. And then there was a nature one and another type of justice thing that was worded differently. And you could choose what type of one you wanted, and you even got like a Disney pin to know so the people know what you wanted. Right. And um, and like you can go in, like there are automatic doors, and you can just walk in, and the whole experience is amazing. It's like you're actually going into a workshop, and they have a whole sort of small backstory to it, like how they have parts, and the fact that um. The stormtroopers may think of them as just junk, but they, but they say like it's ancient rel- relics from the past. Right, right. And like they even go into explanation on the colors of the lightsabers, like how red represents power and justice, and the fact that it's that some of the colors are commonly used by famous Jedi's and Sith. Right. And you even get kind of a cameo uh, appearance with the spirit of Yoda offering yeah. some instructions at one point in time as well. Yeah. So you get to pick a lightsaber style, right? Mm-hmm. And from that lightsaber style, you get to pick one of two different sets of um, uh, parts. Mm-hmm. Okay. So each style has two lightsabers. And you have the hilt, you have various parts of the hilt that you have. Um, and then you can mix and match between those to build your own custom saber. Yeah. 
And then once you've built, you know, once you've picked the parts, um, they, you pick what they consider the heart of the crystal of the, of the lightsaber, the Kyber crystal. Mm -hmm. And they come around with the special holder and the crystals are all lit up and they describe Actually, that's the first one. It is. They describe what each of the crystals represents. And even like Jedi or and, Sith who have used them. Exactly. And you get to pick your crystal and then that crystal goes into the heart of the saber and then you assemble all the parts around the saber. Then you step back, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what happens when they have you step back from the table? Um, the people go around and putting them in the little um, holders. I don't know what they're what you want me to call them. So you like. right. So you have workers in the workshop there that are there to assist. So after you've put yours together, you step back and they do their job. Mm -hmm. They take the saber and they put it into a mounting bracket yeah. in the table. Then explain what happens from there. Then the spirit of Yoda comes in and realizes that you're making lightsabers, and eventually your lightsabers are activated. Right. And once you activate your lightsaber, the little compartment opens and you can take it out. Yeah, and the lightsabers turn on and you, you, you get your completed lightsaber at that point in time. Yeah, well technically you activate them yourselves and then you take them out once the compartment opens. Right. So it was it was. It was cool. The whole thing was story based. Uh, you felt like you were part of the story. Yeah. Uh, it it the way they do it, it's it's almost a spiritual experience, but not in a religious way. Because mm -hmm. there's all the mysticism, the force mysticism that you you introduced to. Yeah. So you made yours, and you have it here for us. Why don't you show us what it looks like? Alrighty. And I'm not going to do the table cam. I'm going to do your direct cam. Well, this is kind of heavy. So, so that is your hill. Actually, we'll put it on the table and we'll show it on the table what it looks like. So you got, uh, you have an emitter on one end. Um, which one? Where the blade comes out. Yep. So that end. Then you have part of the hilt. Here, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have the two pieces where your activation uh, stud is. Yep. Then you have another piece on the back end, and then you have the pommel on the on the on the end. Mm -hmm. So why don't you dramatically pick it up for us? We'll give you the wide angle there, and you activate your lightsaber for us. So how is that? <laughs> cool. That is pretty cool. Now you can't really see, let's see if we can see it from this angle, if we can get the color. Uh, we're a little bright in the studio here, so the color's washed up, but that is a green blade. Mm -hmm. Hang on, if you come to me, you can tell it's green, sort of. Sort of. Um, so you chose which lightsaber? I chose the Justice and Peace one. Justice and Peace with the green crystal. Mm -hmm. And why did you choose that saber and that crystal? Well, for one, I am not exactly a Sith. Not so. exactly, no. Plus, I prefer to go for peace and justice because I don't want to bring terror around um, the land, I suppose. So you are peace, justice, in the American way, right? Like Superman. <laughs> no. No? Do not do that. No. <laughs> no. Okay, so were you satisfied with the experience? Mm-hmm. Were you happy with your lightsaber? Yep. All right, turn it off before you poke somebody's eye out. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So so that was one of the really cool experiences. We had made reservations for that well in advance yep. uh, because it is so popular. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact, when we first got the tickets for the park, we tried to make reservations and they weren't available. So I was kind of bummed out about that. We eventually did check back again and Mommy was able to get us a reservation. Yay. So the other thing that we did when we were there was another custom experience. And that was building a droid. So tell us about the droid experience. Okay, so the droid experience was really cool. You go into another one of this room, and the first thing you probably see is a conveyor belt of a bunch of different parts from droids like C-3PO, BB-8, and R2-D2. Mainly R2-D2, R2-D2's parts and C-3PO's parts. Um, there... 
And you also wait in a small little line, and once you have, and you can decide to make an, e- to either make a BB, or an R two, or an R two. So either a ball or a three legged little <laughs> trash can. <laughs> Daddy. So yeah, once you do, when you're ready, they'll give you the basket, and there's like a small little conveyor belt that has all the parts, and you can choose what col- your color scheme and, um, like I just deci- me and you decide to go for. A BB and mommy went with an R2. Right. So we have to pick all the parts that we need. Yeah. So for the BB, you had to pick the shell. Uh huh. You, you had, had to the, pick the mechanic, the mechanic thing. The inside part. And you had to pick your head. And the head. And that was it. So that was pretty simple. For the R2 units, though. You had to get the legs, the small little leg, the body, the head, and I think the mechanic thing. And there was that. a mechanic inside. Yeah. So it was a little bit more complicated. Mm hmm. And then you go wait in line until one of the workstations opens up. Yep. So once the workstations open up, what do you do from there? Um, you follow the instructions to build it. You, If you have to add extra parts, you can. And it took me a while to get past one of the step because I couldn't find where the antennas were. And eventually they, I realized they were inside the head. Right. So, and, oh yeah, you have to actually get a thing for the head as well. I forgot okay. to say that. Remember the thing that? Oh makes right, the, there was a brain inside the head that you have to yeah, get. Yeah, I to. forgot to add that. In. For the BB units. Yeah. Yeah. Um and um and I couldn't get past a few of the other steps, but eventually I was. And then once you're done, you tell them, and then like they put them in this small little box and put a remote in and activate it basically, and te- and eventually they take you out and teach you how to use it. Right. And during that activation process, if there's status lights on the table that activate as it goes through the different process, and if you pay attention to those lights, that's them injecting the personality into the droid so each droid has a unique personality. You can also get a chip where you can put it in and each droid will have their own personality and you can customize the personality. Right. So you made a BB unit, right? Yep. So let's take a look at your BB unit. Put it up on the table for the audience there. Gotcha. Boom. <laughs> so what does he do? Okay, so I have the remote he- here. Okay. I'm going to turn it on. And so on the- there are different controls. You can turn him with the... Oh, I think he went to sleep. Oh, darn it. Wake up. I, I don't think slapping around is going to wake him up. Oh, darn just it. To, that's all right. Just describe what he does. Okay, so with these controls, he can speak. These two buttons. He can uh, turn with these two, and he can move with these and this. Okay, so the blue buttons, they can go backwards and forwards and left and right. Yep. And they can be activated at the same time, so you can steer them. Yeah. Then the round red buttons are the ones that make him say different phrases. Yep. And then the rectangular red button allows you to actually rotate the top of him where his head is. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell us, are you were you satisfied with that experience? Yep, I definitely was. Okay. It was definitely a cool experience. And they also have the other small builder droid ones where you can completely customize it, where this sort of had a limited amount, but... right. It's, it was still a really cool experience, and the fact that your droid can be alive once you get him working. So cool. do you, is he hard to control? Uh, sometimes, yes. Yeah, He's he kind of has a fast. mind of his own, yeah, and he can, he can move. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were playing with him in the, playing with him in the, in the hotel room, and uh, they bumped a lot. Yep, and yours ha- and your head felt. My falling head keeps off. falling off of mine. Yeah, I think I got a bad magnet on mine. Yeah. So, all right, that was the Droid Workshop. Uh, the other thing that we did there was we did a lot of shopping. Mm-hmm. Um, we spent I'm, a lot of money there. We did. Uh, I'm not going to show off any of the stuff that I bought today, but we did get you a couple of things. Mm-hmm. So, why don't you show us the other two things that we got you one at a time? Because you are the consummate musician. Let's let's give you the table shot there. So this is a unique uh, Star Wars um, fluted instrument, which you don't actually have to blow into. It is all electronic. And this is similar to what was used by the 
uh, Bith Band in um, Star Wars A New Hope. Do you know what the name of the band was? No. Um, I just know they played the song. It was, I forget the guy's name, but it was the Modal Nodes was the name of the band. Mm. And you can give us the Cantina song, can't you? Try it again. I think it's on the other one. Oh, okay. All right, so that's one of the instruments that we got, and that you can actually play it like a regular yeah, instrument. I, I can actually play a song. Nice. Yeah, that's the most common song. All right, so let's see the other instrument. And this is another simulated wind instrument from the band. Um, this one, I think this one is a, called a clue, K-L-O-O. -O. I'm not entirely sure, though. Mm. So this one will play us the Cantina song. Let me just find the button for it. You keep pushing them. There we go. Play that same song. <laughs> so this one is a range in a square keyboard, which is a little bit more cumbersome to play, but still the same effect. It still tunes. So a couple of cool souvenirs to bring back that are unique to Galaxy's Edge. Um, and just another thing that I would like to mention, um, you can put that back down. Um, the one thing that I found very interesting was Galaxy's Edge was you couldn't buy regular merchandise there, um, which lent to that feeling of authenticity. So the, the shops that they had there, they had a creature shop that you could buy various creatures. Um, you could buy at the Toy Darien toy store and it was all like wooden toys that were handmade and stuff. So it was, it was very realistic yeah. like you would have expected. And the so, bathrooms were cool too. The bathrooms were very unique as well. Yeah, the sinks were. It looks exactly like you'd expect it to look in the Star Wars in the Star Wars universe because you really don't get to see any bathrooms. Exactly. <laughs> Except in the Mandalorian on the ship. So if you watch in that. the last few minutes that we have, the one other thing that I did want to touch on here was Rise of the Resistance. Tell us about, without giving away too many spoilers, tell us about Rise of the Resistance. I think one of the best ride experiences I've ever had to experience. Why is that? Um, because it's a completely brand new type of ride that probably no one, like no other Disney ride has experienced. Describe it for us. Okay, so there are three different um, experiences you can go through. Um, a virtual one, which is similar to um, uh, Star Tours. Right. A walkthrough. And the actual ride experience. And these are all in the ride. This isn't you get to pick one. Yeah. You get all three of these different experiences in one ride. Yeah. Is that it? <laughs> no, no. Okay. So at the beginning, you're just walking through like a t an entire resistance space. And let me just say the walk is very long. Yes, it is. Um, once you get to the actual place... There's a group of you that goes in and they explain what goes on and stuff. And there's even a hologram of Ray and eventually some of the other cast come in uh -huh. and they explain your mission and stuff. So then you exit the, that and go into the transport. Right. So you're outside. So they take you through a doorway and then you're outside in the courtyard and Poe's black X-wing is off to one side and you get in to a transport a resistance transport where the door opens on the side mm -hmm. everybody loads in there and it's standing room in there yeah you basically just hold on to bars that are around there right so the door closes you see a pilot and you can and a commander in there and they're going to take off because the first order has found the resistance base okay yep so you can see through the cockpit in the front you can see through the one in the back. A window where, in the back. Where we had to basically look. That's because where we, we couldn't were. see the front. So the ship takes off, goes up, and then what happens? Um, we get into some problems with um, the First Order and some 
and the X-Wings try to save them. Apparently, Poe's the only survivor, so he says he'll come back for them. Right, for so us basically Poe abandons us after the other <laughs> X-Wings get killed, and we get captured. Yep. Yeah, very heroic. And the thing is, like, so the whole time you're supposed to be moving downward because through the same door you entered, you're in a completely different area. So through the whole experience, they're basically taking you downward, and you can't even tell you're going down at all. Well, don't ruin that. Okay. That's the spoiler part. Sorry. So you get you get captured by the First Order, and they tractor beam you into um, a landing bay. And your order, they open the doors and get ordered to get out. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So you step through this door that two minutes before was in a courtyard outside at Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. So you step through now, and where are you? You're like in the entrance of a Star Destroyer. Right. And so you, you're you... in a hangar bay, and there's an entire like platoon of First Order Stormtroopers and I lined to, up. And I have to be honest, I never thought they were robots. Mm. They look like real people. Don't ruin it. Okay. So there's a whole row of First Order Stormtroopers, and then behind them, you see the entrance. You know, there's a shielded entrance that is holding the air in and the space is outside and you see the battle going on outside through this massive 40 foot door. And then what do they do? They lead you down a hallway. <clears throat> and what's the next thing that then it's the walkthrough where you get to be in a star destroyer and just get to see the inside which you've never really been able to experience only in the movie right so they walk you through the corridors and then you have to wait until it's your turn and there's first order officers there and they're not polite to you not they're, at all they're kind of rough with you <laughs> i can actually like that um and what they do is they break you up into teams and you're assigned a color as part of a team and then you go in for an interrogation. You get you get directed into Frank, a room. Can I just say, frankly, at that point, I actually thought they were going to do stuff to us, because I so I got really nervous. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it was very authentic. Um, so you go into this uh, interrogation room, and what happens at that point in the interrogation room? So then you um, see Kylo Ren, and I don't remember what. General officer, Hux. General Hux come in. They say they're going to interrogate you until like they. Because they know you hold precious evidence. And then eventually there is... They get called away because there's something going on on the bridge with the yeah. battle. And you're left in the interrogation room. And then the resistance comes in to rescue you. So they break down this one wall here. And they you, you go in to, you know, you follow the resistance officers there. And then you get into the transport that's being driven by this droid. Mm-hmm. And then everything kind of like gets crazy real quick. Yep. Uh, because you go on this crazy ride through the through the Star Destroyer. You've got stormtroopers that are shooting at you now. You go into this giant room that's a cargo bay or a landing bay, and what do you what do you encounter in there? Um, the cargo bay. Which one was that? Where the two big giant things are. The two big oh, yeah. giant things. Oh yeah, they're. I think I don't remember if they were guns or not. No, they were adats. Oh. Right, there's adats, but there is a scene where you're going through this hallway, and there's these massive turbo lasers. So on one side there's these massive turbo la lasers, on the other side is another um, window. We'll call it that's protected by an energy shield. And you can see out in the space where the bad guy, where the battle's going on. Mm -hmm. And these turbo lasers are firing. And every time they fire, they recoil back. Yeah. Then they slide them back up to the window and they recoil back when they fire. And you have to, your, your transport has to move between these and not squish you in the process. Yeah. Then after that, then we run into the walkers. Mm hmm. And we encounter. Who, what's his name that we encounter? Finn. So Finn's there, and he's trying to help us at that point. And he tells us we have to go down the elevator, but we end up going up. We go up, and we go up, and we're nose to nose with a forty-foot tall ATAT, -AT. 
And he starts firing at us. And then we got to run. So we start heading the other way. And as he's firing at us, the bl massive blaster bolts are going by us overhead, hitting the wall and exploding on the wall. And uh, I'm not going to ruin the rest of it, but it gets even crazier from there. Mm -hmm. So that was about an 18 minute ride from, from all accounts with probably six different scene changes. Um, probably dozens of different ride technologies. Uh, it was incredibly convincing seeing the blaster bolts because they're not, you're not just seeing lights show up. And you're not seeing a laser because you have to think about Star Wars. When they fire a blaster at you in Star Wars, it's not an, a laser beam that instantly goes on and off. Mm -hmm. It's a bolt of energy that you see go flying. And they actually achieve that effect inside this ride. Mm -hmm. So you'll, you'll see the bolt hit a, an area on the wall that was perfectly fine before. And when the bolt hits it, it blasts a hole in the wall with smoke and sparks and everything. So to capture that effect was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, so what was your favorite part? The whole ride experience. The whole ride. But specifically the end. The end. What happened at the end? So um, I, you basically have to escape the Star Destroyer. And to escape, you have to be in a pod. And let me just say, since you go up in the elevator, what comes up must come down. Right. So you're shot down, and you have to basically try to land on this planet as best you can, and it's sort of a rough landing. Yes, it is. And I won't give too much away, but <clears throat> I do know someone screamed during that. Yeah, a Holy. few people screamed, I think. Yeah. Uh, one thing to note. Um, which is really interesting, and we didn't actually find out until after the ride. There's a tie-in between the Rise of the Resistance ride at Galaxy's Edge and the Rise of Skywalker movie, where you, as the participant on the ride, get to play a small part in the movie. So it's kind of neat to find out about that afterwards. Wait, how did you find that out? I had no idea. Well... If I tell you, I'd, I'd spoil the whole thing. Well, you can tell me afterwards. I'll tell you afterwards. I don't want to spoil it for everyone else. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we had a blast. Galaxy's Edge was incredible. Um, Rise of the Resistance was awesome. Uh, and we had, overall, I think we had a pretty good vacation. And I also wanted to quickly note how they actually got you all on the ride because they knew Rise of the Resistance was the newer ride and everyone was going to go on it. Right. And they did a virtual queue where you were given us a loading bay number and um, when you when your number was called between a couple other people, you had like an hour to get back to the park. So like if you were... Let's say number 30. Um, you could like go back to your room and just wait until you found your call. And they gave you like one or two hours. It was a two hour window. Yeah. Two hours to get there and get on the ride. Yeah. It was, it was a smart way of doing it. And it was much or more organized than I thought it would, would be. Um, the trick was you had to get to the park at park opening because they open up, you can't actually get into this queue, this virtual queue. Unless you're in the park. Unless you're in the park. They were letting people get into the park early. And then for us, the park opened at 7. They let us in at 6.30, I think. Mm -hmm. At 7 o'clock, they made an announcement that the queue was open. And then everyone had to use their Disney Park app to get into the queue. Yeah. And once you got in the queue, you're pretty much guaranteed a spot. Yeah. So, but very cool experience. Um, very cool vacation. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The ride home wasn't that bad. Didn't run into nearly as much traffic on the way home, and I think we had a good time. And overall, being in the in a, in the park on Christmas Eve was definitely not as bad as we thought it would. No, it wasn't nearly as crowded at Hollywood Studios. I can only imagine that. Magic Kingdom was probably pretty crowded. Though. Yeah, but like New Year's Eve, like we saw yeah, the it traffic. Yeah, it was at capacity. So 
So I think that's it for our vacation recap. I think we're going to skip our closing remarks this week. We didn't really have... Yeah, I don't really have any thoughts or shout-outs. Yeah, so we'll skip that for this week. Next week, we will be back with our traditional uh, show format um, and our little bit more serious topics. We figured we'd have a little bit of fun this week. Why not? Um, so same time next Friday, uh, we will have, uh, podcasts will be available for streaming video and audio Monday morning as usual at eight. Uh, you can reach us via email at comments at insights into things dot com insights into teens dot com. Sorry. You can get us on the web at www.insightsintothings.com. You can get us on uh, Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things, where we're streaming live now uh, on Fridays at 8 p.m. Facebook, you can get us at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. And on Twitter, you can shout us at insights underscore things. I think that's. Everything, right? Don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, done by you and Mommy, and Insights in a Tomorrow, a monthly podcast done by you and my brother Sam. Very good. And with that, I think we are out. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. And we'll talk to you next week.